Hi there, everyone, and welcome to March 2025's monthly Spotlight app. And this month, it's the turn of UserScript, an awesome plugin by Andrew Sawadsky, who you may well know better from the forums as Squid. Now, I can't actually believe we haven't featured this plugin before. It's one that I use on all of my servers every single day. Now, this little gem lets us create and schedule scripts to really handle just about anything. We can make scripts to do backup jobs from server to server, or even just our syncing data from one share to another. And you'll also find a whole load of scripts in the community that you can use if you don't know how to make your own. So whether you're a total scripting newbie or a seasoned command line kung fu master, well, this plugin gives you the power to make on raid work smarter, not harder. Okay, so let's get user scripts installed. And to do that, we need to go to the Apps tab here, and we'll see user scripts under the Spotlight Apps. But if you're watching this in the future and you don't see it here, then you can also just type in user scripts here and get to the plugin this way. So let's click on Install to install user scripts. And when downloaded, click on to Done. Okay, so when user scripts is installed, if we go to the Settings tab here, we'll always see user scripts under the User Utilities section. But remember as well, if you're using Unraid 7 or above, you can also favorite this, which will create a new tab, popping it into favorites. Okay, so once it's installed, how do we actually use this? Well, let's click onto the user scripts icon here. And we can see here that there are three demo scripts that come pre-installed, such as this one here, where we can view the Docker log size. But the most important thing is adding our own scripts. But before we add some new scripts, I'm kind of going to go about this the wrong way around and show you removing scripts first. So if we hover over the cog here, you can see this brings up some options. We've got edit name here, where obviously we can change the name of the script. We can edit the description. And also here, we can actually edit the script itself. And we do that straight in the GUI. And finally, we can delete the script. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete the demo scripts here as they're nothing that I'm going to need to use. And let's start by adding our first script. Now, if we click this button here, we do get some additional information about how we can use this plugin. But this is advanced, so we'll leave this for a little bit later. So to make a new script, obviously, we just click on to add new script and we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this copy to backup. Now there's no description here, but as we saw earlier, if I wanted to put in a description, then I can do. I'm going to delete this out and put rsync share to backup. So now to actually write the script, if we hover over here and go to edit script, we can actually write it directly in here. Now user scripts automatically puts what's called the shebang at the top. Oh, baby, she moves, she moves. Sorry about that, guys. Couldn't resist. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, shebang. Now, you shouldn't delete this, but if you were to by mistake, it doesn't really matter because user scripts is smart enough that if it doesn't detect it here, it will be able to run the script anyway. But still, it's good practice to always include a shebang at the top of your scripts. Okay, so let's make a really simple script using rsync. Now, for those of you who don't know, rsync is a Linux command line utility that basically allows us to copy files from one place to another. So here you can see I'm typing rsync, and then I'm going to put some flags. I'm going to put hyphen a v a, and what that stands for is archive, verbose, and human readable. So the archive, what that does is basically recursively go through the source directory that we specify. And so we would put the source first, and then with a space, or it doesn't matter if it's a couple of spaces, and then the destination. So this is a super simple script, one line long. So let's actually fill in a source and destination and see it working. So I'm going to open up my shares here in a new tab so we don't actually close this window. And let's say I want to back up this ISO share here. To this share here, I've got called backups. So Easiest way to do that is I'm going to click here into the ISO share. And then with the Unraid file manager, I'm going to right click here. And this gives me the source location. So I can copy this here onto 
the clipboard. And then I'm going to paste it here where I've put source. Now I'm going to put a forward slash at the end because I want to copy everything that's inside of that folder. If I didn't put that, it would copy the name of the folder and then everything inside it into my destination. Okay, so now let's grab the location for the destination as well. And here's my backup destination. And again, at the end, I'm going to put a forward slash. So basically, the rsync command is going to copy everything recursively in the source here using the hyphen A flag and pop it here into the backup share. And we're going to be able to see what it's doing because we've got the verbose flag and human readable. So now the script's done. All I need to do is click save and the script's done. Now we've got two ways we can actually run the script when we trigger it manually. We can run the script and we'll see what's happening. This will open a window which we'll need to leave open while the script's running and closing it will actually cancel the script. Now the other way to do it is running it in the background. And running it in the background, we don't actually see what happens, but it means we can leave it. You know, some scripts that are doing backups, they may take hours and hours to run. So running it in the background is the best thing to do because then you don't need to leave the actual window open. So let's have a look and run the script regularly in the foreground by clicking on run script here. Okay, so we can see here that my ISOs are being copied. Now I'm going to go back across while this is going on. And here I'm in the backup share. So if I refresh this page, we'll see things coming across now. So now, as I was saying earlier, if it's a big job to do, running it in the foreground isn't always the best because if I go and close this window now, then the script's going to stop. So let's go back to the backup share and I'm going to delete all of this, which is all it got completed during the time it was running. And so now this time, let's run this script in the background. So I'm going to click on run in background here. And we can see here, it says the script's running. So if we really wanted to stop the script, we could click abort script. And also this little icon here, we can show the log. And here we can see what's happening, just the same as we did in the foreground window earlier. But I'm going to close this and let's go back here. And we can see everything's copying across. So how will we know the script's finished? Well. These at the moment to run it are grayed out and we just could see it stop then. We can see it doesn't say running here anymore. There's no abort button, so we know the script's finished. And if I click on the log here, we can see here that it says the script's finished. So that's a really simple script, one line long, that allows us to copy data from one location to another. So we can also set a script we've made to run on a certain schedule. Now here we can set it to run, say, hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly on a time schedule. So this is really useful if you wanted to, say, do a daily backup, say, from one share to another, like we did then. But just one thing, if you are doing a backup from one share to another, make sure it's on a different pool, else there's not really that much point in doing the backup. If the underlying storage would fail, well, the backup would be failing with it. So here you can see my ISOs is on River and the backup on Janestown, which are both two different pools here. But also you could script this so it backs up to another server. But sadly, that's out of the scope of this video today. So as well as actually scheduling a specific time chosen from these default options here, we can also have a script run at the startup of the array or when the array stops or at only the first start of the array. So this can be really useful for various things. But also, sometimes hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly isn't correct for us, and then we have to use the bottom option here, custom. Now, this sets a cron schedule, and we have to actually write something in here. And cron can be quite hard to work out. So I find the easiest way to do that is there's a website called Crontab Guru, and the URL is just crontab.guru. And what this website does is help us work out a cron schedule. So here we can see it says that 54 then triple asterisks written like this will start at 4.05. So here the four is the hour and the five is the minute. Now the asterisk for the day means it will run every day, every month and every day of the week too. So say I wanted this script to run at 2 a.m. every day. Let's do that. So two here for the hour 
and we want it dead on the hour, so a zero. So here, this will run at 2 a.m. every day. So we just copy this and paste that into the cron schedule here. And whenever we make a change to when the script runs, we need to make sure we click on apply here. Okay, so now my backup script here will run every day at 2 a.m. So anything new that I might have added into the ISOs share here, 2 a.m. every day will be backed up into my backup share here. So a very simple script, but can be incredibly useful. Okay, so now we're going to look at a totally different script so I can show you some of the more advanced features we can do with the user scripts plugin. So first I'm going to add a new script here. I'm going to call this sleep server and wake at wake at x time. Now this time I'm not going to edit the description here and I'm going to paste in a script that I've already made. So what the script actually does is when it runs, it puts the server to sleep, but it will wake up the server at the time specified in this variable here. Now we're not going to go into how this script works. Basically, it uses the RTC wake command, allowing the server to wake up after a certain amount of time. So if I was to save this now, and I ran the script, either in the foreground or the background, it's going to put the server to sleep and wake it up at 7 a.m. But if I didn't want it to wake at 7 a.m. and I wanted it to wake at, say, 8 a.m., I'd have to come and change this variable every time. So that's really not very convenient. But the great thing about user scripts is if we click on how to add scripts here and we scroll down, if we look here, we can put in some inline variables. So for the description, we can put in hashtag description equals, and it will give a description of the script. Hashtag foreground only equals true. We'll make this script only be able to run in the foreground. Hashtag background only equals true. The script will only be able to be ran on the background. So what these do is basically is remove the buttons. So if I specified only be allowed to run in the background, it will remove this run script button here. Now, a useful one can be the hashtag array started equals true. That means that the script will only ever run if the array is started. And the name, yep, we don't really need that because we named the script anyway. And here we can actually add an argument to the script. So those of you who know anything about scripting is we can always add an argument to a script after we run it. So this allows us to do that. So the hashtag argument description this gives a description of what the argument does that we're running to the script. And then the hashtag argument default here, we can have default arg1, default arg2, and so we can add multiple arguments to the script. Now, this probably sounds quite complicated if you have got no idea what I'm talking about. So I think the easiest thing to do is let's edit this script and we'll make some changes to it using some of the functions we were talking about earlier. So I'm just going to delete this out here because I don't want this time specified here in this variable like that. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define here the description with, with the hashtag description equals, like we can see here. And now for this script, I'm going to enable here the foreground only and set that to true because I only want this script to run in the foreground because the next thing I'm going to do is to have the script be able to have an argument added to it which we'll use to set the time. So first I want to put in the description of what the argument's going to be. So that's this one here. And then next, I'm going to put in here the argument default. I'm just having one argument and I've just set it to automatically populate it with 7 a.m. here. So now the next thing I'm going to do is instead of having my time variable set how it was before, I'm going to set it to use the first argument. And if it's not set, it's going to also default it to 7 a.m. So now if I save the changes to this script, well, in fact, what I'm going to do with this script is this is the line here that actually sends the server to sleep. I'm actually going to delete this line here. And I think let's just have it print out the value of the variable time, because obviously I don't want the server to sleep while I'm making this video. So. Let's click on to save here. And you might be thinking, well, I thought you said, Ed, when we set foreground only equals true, we won't see the run in the background. Well, let's refresh the page. And now we can see 
This script can't run in the background and we can't set a schedule for it. But now if we click run script, we can see here, it's asking us to put in the time when we want the server to wake up. So let's put in here, let's imagine it's a Sunday and I'm gonna have a bit of a lie-in. Let's have it wake up at 11 a.m. and click on to okay. So here we can see the scripts run. Now ignore this at the top, but at the bottom here, there it's saying the time that it would actually wake the server up from where we echoed out the time variable. Okay, so that's a simple overview of user scripts. It's an incredibly powerful plugin in my opinion. Now, if we go across to say my main server here and we look at my user scripts on this server, you can see I've got a whole bunch of scripts here that do everything from making ZFS snapshots, converting folders to data sets, CFS replication, backup, all sorts of things. So if you haven't tried out user scripts, guys, I'd highly recommend it. A really awesome plugin and certainly deserves to be featured as this month's monthly spotlight. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoy using this plugin as much as we do. Now, please join me next month for the next monthly spotlight, which is, oh, come on, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to wait. But whatever it is, it's going to be great. And I can't wait to share it with you and show you all about it. Thank you all and have a great day.